Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Bit of an experiment today. I've got a little uh, little microphone on. Someone was saying that it sounds like I'm shouting into the camera. Uh, well, I have been shouting into the camera because I have the message of fine wine to get across to you and it is vitally important that I do it in as loud a voice as possible. You know that, I know that. Um, four Sauvignons today. Uh, we've got four different countries. We've got France, we've got Chile, we've got South Africa, we have got Slovenia. Yeah, four different countries. Um, I don't think any of them will have been uh, tampered with with any oak barrels, so let's just dig into them. I've got them in vintage order, so I've got 2010 Northern Hemisphere, uh, which is the Dort, uh, La Grande Cuvée Sauvignon Blanc from Bordeaux. So, Bordeaux. I mean, Sauvignon Blanc's the, the, one of the main grapes for white wine, the other one's Sauvignon, but uh, I think Sauvignon seems to be getting the upper hand now. But the blends of the two I really quite like. But Dort usually do a pretty good job. Let's see whether they've done that with this one. <coughs> he said burping. Oh, he's burping and hitting his microphone. Shouldn't do that. Tip. We've got this nice grassy, citrusy character. A uh, bit of green apple there, but one of the things I noticed more than anything else is elderflower. Um, I can't remember the last time I had my mum's elderflower cordial, which is, uh, she is the font of all elderflower notes in my tasting repertoire. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, it's got, that, it's got that slightly outdoor greenness to it. Uh, it smells like it's gonna be nice, clean, fresh, uh, sappy wine. That's just what it is. For some people, it might be a little bit on that sharp side, but I reckon if you serve them that with um, well, fish and chips, just think about that sprinkle of vinegar that you have on your fish and chips to pet them up. Um, or if they have that with some seafood, it, it, would, look, it would go really nicely. Um, I, again, not hugely complex, but rather tasty. And um, it's, a, it's a good crisp summer wine, picnic wine. I mean, it's, uh, actually, I've, I've opened eight bottles today. Um, I've got these four Sauvignons and uh, got four rosés for later on, and um, six of them came with screw caps, including this one. Well, bully for Bordeaux. Doesn't matter if you forget your corkscrew when you go on the picnic. Let's see how we get on with Yali. So six months older, we're in the uh, Southern Hemisphere, Chile, uh, National Reserve Sauvignon. Now I had Yali's uh, Viognier quite recently. I found it a bit on the, um, yeah, it felt like there was a slight bit of controlling uh, influence going on. Haven't, they haven't quite captured the magic uh, richness of Viognier. Let's see whether they've captured the zip of Sauvignon here. Doesn't smell quite, quite as lean and keen as the Dort. Um, this is, it feels like it's got a little bit more fatness and flesh to it. Uh, hasn't got quite the green aromatics and, um, uh, yeah, hasn't got that aromatic interest that I found in the, in, in the Dort one. Feels, it still feels like it's going to be sort of on that nice, fresh, summer drinking uh, edge, so let's give it a whirl. It's got an ever so slight edge of green pepper. Um, too much green pepper in a Sauvignon Blanc for me, well, in any wine. And uh, it miss, it, it's, it's not a very attractive feature. Here, it's just there in the background. There's this bit of apple, a uh, bit of uh, lemon, grapefruit. It's nice, it's, it is quite rich, it does feel like it's got quite a bit of body. Um, the door has got maybe a little more of a dainty character to it. This has got fuller flesh, a bit more, a bit more weight on its, um, on its uh, framework of acidity, but still nice, fresh, clean, clean summer wine. Let's hop to another continent, um, South Africa. Where are we? Springfontein, unfiltered terroir selection Sauvignon Blanc uh, from Walker Bay. So uh, down in the southern end of South Africa, whale country. I've, I've had, I think I've had their Shannon before and it's been pretty good. So I think it's the first time I've tried their Sauvignon. Maybe not, but um, I think it's certainly the first time I've done it for these videos. Now there's a different style here. Um, if the first two will try and major on that sort of acidic uh, citrus character, here it feels like there's a little bit more peachy, uh, tinned pear-like flesh. I don't know if they've got a bit of wood on here. Um, da -da 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 -da, doesn't really say. Um, but uh, there's a slight, ever so slight smokiness. And is that smokiness that I get um, in, in white Bordeaux that's been aged in barrel, maybe with a touch of semillon in there. I don't think this has got semillon in. Um, the other thing it reminds me of is Rueda from uh, from uh, Castilla y Leon in north central, well, sort of northwest central Spain, and um, it smells like it's going to have a bit more complexity probably than the uh, uh, these are the, the first two. But uh, does that make it a better wine? Well, it certainly feels like there's a bit more going on. It's not all about sort of like immediate fresh, juicy spring-like fruit. 
I think there's a touch of wood in there. So having said that they were unhampered by oak, maybe I got that one a bit wrong because there is this like smoky, um, yeah, smoky, lazy, ever so slight toasty character. What I mean by lazy, it's got this creamy, nutty undercurrent uh, going through it. While the fruit has got this uh, uh, this flesh and uh, freshness to it, it's also got this quite plush character. And um, yeah, I, I like the wine. Uh, it also feels for me like um, if the if the Dort and the Yali were ones that uh, you'd want to uh, to to do uh, assault uh, as soon as possible. This feels like it's, it it might have a little bit more life. And uh, I mean, it's the um, what is it? Just over a year a year old now. Feels like it would go on for quite a few, uh, certainly a few more months, and uh, maybe this time next year it might be even better than it is today. But it tastes good today. Final wine. Now this is uh, Slovenia, handpicked in Slovenia. Puklovic and friends. Puklovic? I don't know. Puklovic. Yeah, anyway, 2009 vintage. So a year and a half old. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Well, this is the palest in colour. And uh, also, I, I, I smell it, and it feels like it's going to be one of the, the lightest and most delicate. So probably the one I should have started with, rather than the one I'm, I'm finishing with. But um, it feels like it's got more in common with this, um, the South African one. It's got some of that um, nutty, lazy character, and uh, it feel, it's not doesn't feel like it's gone for the grassy, ever so slight shriek. Uh, that was in the first two. Uh, yeah, a bit more, a bit more interesting, uh, more tech. It feels like it's going to have one be one of those that's uh, that's got the aromas, but it's also got texture as well. I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, it is light, it's delicate. Um, it's got some of that uh, slight grassiness, uh, nettles, grass, citrus, grapefruit, and lemon in particular. And uh, this sappy mineral undercurrent as well, um, and then when you just think it's going to be maybe a bit too uh, a bit too stark, uh, there's this like wealth of um, richness and this lazy uh, lazy generosity that takes over. I like that. I like really nice set of four wines actually. I mean the the Yale is probably my least favourite, but to be ha happily drink a couple of glasses of that, then it, probably the Dort, and then these two fighting it out between them. Uh, I think both of them are pretty smart, but uh, hey, see you soon. Thank you.